Sup, ladies and gentlemen, Akulon here, and of course, welcome back to each and every one of you. Today, we're looking into Kalia and doing the light. There's a lot of speculation, and also, you know, I have to fix a couple of misconceptions that came out of the last video. As always, the deal is simple. If by the end of this video, you agree with me and you think, hey, Akulon, you've got a point, man, you hit the like button. If not, you hit the dislike button, and I know that I have to do better. If you've already hit the like button because you're really cool, well, I love you. Thank you so much for, I guess, the trust that you placed in me. You can join us over on Patreon, Twitch, and of course become a YouTube member if you so choose. That will make you even cooler. But hey, just hitting the like button will suffice. And with that said, let's jump into it, shall we? So before we get to the light speculation and all the rest of it, in my last video, I said this instead uh, and this is purely speculation so i could be completely wrong the void tells us that the light struck a bargain with the enemy of all now the only place this could be true is in the resurrection of kalia menethil kalia menethil was brought back by the light we know that Kalia was brought back not using necromancy. Now, naturally, as you can imagine, as soon as I said it, the community had a slight meltdown. At least some people did. Because the instant comments started coming in. Well, uh, actually, the Margrave in the Shadowlands told Kalia that, hey, necromancy is necromancy. It doesn't matter by what magic type. First and foremost... That's some interesting lore dumps right there. The idea that necromancy isn't actually a magical source in its own right, and necromancy is in fact not death magic, as it were, but necromancy can be utilized and wielded by any of the magical forces in Azeroth, be it foul, be it arcane, be it life, doesn't really matter. Very interesting, but not really part of the speculation for today. I first want to talk about Kalia Menethil, and was it necromancy? The short answer is yes, the Margrave isn't incorrect. It is necromancy, and necromancy is necromancy regardless of how it occurred. But I do believe that the, ne the, the Margrave is wrong as well. I do not believe that the Margrave is operating on all available information. So allow me to first start with what is Forsaken and what happens to the Forsaken after their resurrection. For this, we have Lillian Voss in BFA to thank. As we're doing quests alongside Lillian Voss, we get a lot of information about newly created Forsaken. We know that once they're, when they're newly resurrected, they can be very violent, very angry, their emotions very heightened. And oftentimes it can take a long time for them to get back to their old selves if that ever happens. According to Lillian, some just never get back to who they used to be. For some reason, during the process of necromancy, certain parts of who you once were may have been lost. Uh, you know, for whatever re reason, whatever purpose. We also have the Four Horsemen comic. Uh, this was back in Legion. Actually, no, it was in BFA. Uh, again, in BFA, the Four Horsemen comic actually explains in detail what happens to Undead. Because, yes, DKs and Forsaken are different, but they're still creatures of necromancy. And uh, we learn there that you're not quite ever really your old self uh, when you're brought back through necromancy. So it really is a bit of a coin toss. Shift our focus to the light. Before we can continue any of this uh, discussion, we have to talk a little bit about the light. The light is clearly up to something. The light have been making these moves for some time. The Army of the Light, very big storyline around the Army of the Night. The light forged a Draenei, as it were, Yurl in alternative Draenor. That storyline is one that's been on the back burner for quite some time, and it will eventually break through. We have the Scarlet Crusade that goes literally all the way back to the beginning of World of Warcraft. Uh, we have the light showing its colors on Azeroth. We now have Kalia Menethil being brought back. For what purpose? Now, remember that the people of Lordaeron used to be quite avid light worshippers, quite dedicated. To the following of the light. Lordaeron was literally referred to as the city of light. 
the sitting king of Lordran must always be a wielder and a believer of the light. So it almost feels like the light is going back to claim their old people. The light may be back to claim what is rightfully theirs through the use of Kali Manithil. Why else would the light go through all of this trouble to bring her back? Then consider the whisper of the void. The light had struck a bargain with the enemy of all. Now, before we continue with any of this, I would like you to consider the time when Kalia Menethil died. It was after the defeat of Argus. We know that Argus's death is what brought the Arbiter down. This means that when Kalia Menethil died, and Kalia's death, of course, was in a book, not in the game, so you would be excused if you didn't know this. But when Kalia Menethil died, her soul went to the moor. In other words, the realm of the jailer. The light, of course, wants the soul back because the light has a plan for Kalia Menethil. Perhaps it is the light that willed Kalia's death on that day. But the light now has a problem. It can do it through natural necromantic means, but it runs the risk of not getting the Kalia Menethil that they once wanted. The original Kalia Menethil. They run the risk of getting a maniac back, someone with a lot of anger, a lot of hatred. The other problem, of course, that we should not forget here, it is Zuval. Zuval literally kept Sylvanas' soul split in two for his own purposes. So, Kalia Menethil being inside the moor, Zuval could do the same to her if he figured out that the light really wanted her. So the light would have had to strike a bargain. A bargain not to bring her back through traditional necromancy, but rather to have her be restored, as it were, to ensure that the fullness of Kalia Menethil makes it back. It would still be necromancy. In order to explain this, uh, let's go into the real world, shall we? Imagine you and I are standing in front of a forest. I tell you that I need a hundred trees in this forest deforested because I want to build a house here. You go out first. You gently fell the trees dig up their roots, and you plant them somewhere else in the forest. Thereby, the hundred trees that I wanted gone to build my cabin is now gone, and those trees are simply growing somewhere else to one day be big trees again. Now I step in, and I go, fuck it. I pour a bunch of oil all over the trees, and I light the match. Soon, 250 trees are gone. Sure, I only needed 100, but, you know, Accidents do happen. I have my hundred trees gone. I built my cabin. In both instances, I did deforest the land. I did build my cabin. But in one of these instances, the trees lived on and we only removed the hundred. In the other, accidents happen. I still built my house though, so it is a win by all measurements. This is the difference between necromancy and necromancy. Firstly, the Margrave isn't wrong. Kalia Menethil was brought back through necromancy. But the Margrave is also not privy to the actual deal that was made. For the Margrave, she is looking at a forsaken. She is looking at an undead creature. An undead creature was brought back through necromancy. This makes sense. All the hallmarks are there. It all checks out. And we get to learn that, hey, no matter what force of magic you serve, you too can become a necromancer. What was the deal? Now, I don't know exactly what would have gone into this deal, but I do remember Zuval being very curious after Anduin summoned the light inside the moor. Could that perhaps have been the deal? You give us the soul of Kalia Menethil, and we will give you 
a champion. When I look at what the light wants, when we look at the stories of Yerl, when we look at the stories of the light that we have, the Scarlet Crusade, the light is not so much for free will. As far as the light is concerned, free will, you know, they can take it or leave it. The light is more for absolute obedience. The light, in my opinion, is far more aligned with someone like Zuval than anyone actually realizes. If Zuval succeeded in dominating the universe, it would make the path of the light, in other words, the light's dominance, a mere step away. All the light then has to do is subjugate Zuval, either by converting him or ultimately by destroying him, and they would take control of the entirety of the universe with the light leading the charge. Every one of us, followers and worshippers of the light, through the art of dominion. For what purpose, though? Well, conquest. We know this. We know that our universe is in a constant state of war. The cosmic forces, whilst prone to creating alliances when so needed, are at war with one another. Every single one of them wants to rule over all of the others. For the light, this would have been the perfect, perfect scenario. And if we are correct about what Zuval wanted, the defeat of the Void, and the only reason I'm sort of extrapolating that is because that's what the Nathrazim warned Sargeras about, and that's what drove Sargeras to ultimately join Zuval in his war. Now, we could do the whole 3D, 5D chase thing where Zuval was actually lying about that too, and it's actually a switcheroo, right? But this is where we get into some really convoluted stuff. It is much easier and much simpler to believe that Zuval warned Sargeras about the very thing that he was afraid of, knowing or hoping that Sargeras would see the same tyranny in that threat, the same urgency uh, to deal with said threat. This would make the light a genuine ally. But this, of course, means that Anduin perhaps saw this. Remember, Anduin was connected with Zuval. Zuval used Anduin, dominated him, so to speak. One has to wonder if this is perhaps, to some extent, a two-way street. So while, yes, Zuval could see into the heart of Anduin, perhaps Anduin could sense some of the intentions and some of the memories of Zuval. Perhaps this is why Anduin has yet to return. Because Anduin knows that he was a sacrificial lamb. That the light gave him willingly to Zuval to become Zuval's champion. Perhaps... This is why Anduin has yet to return, because for him, he's not sure. He's not sure what to make of this, because this does align with everything that Sylvanas and him spoke about. So you favor life, is that it? That momentary flicker. Their lives being completely void of choice. Their choices ultimately dictated by the gods, by the cosmic forces. The fact that they don't have the free will that they believe themselves to do. Perhaps this is what Anduin is searching for. A reason, a reason to trust again, a, a reason to trust himself, to trust the light. Perhaps this is a future storyline waiting to happen. I don't know. I can't know because, of course, I'm not a writer uh, of World of Warcraft. I'm simply a speculator. But I do believe that the expansion of the light, or versus the light, is coming soon. I don't believe that it will happen in Dragonflight specifically, but I do think that Dragonflight will hold a lot of the build-up to that expansion. My question to you, of course, is if we were to get a light expansion, what would you like to see in that 
expansion. Let me know in the comment section just down below. Remember, if you enjoyed this theory, please hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. I promise I'm a big boy. I will understand. Plus, no one sees the dislike button anymore, so who cares? Um, if you are a patron, a YouTube member, or a Twitch sub, thank you so much for your monthly support. It means the absolute world to me. And remember, you can join us over on Patreon, YouTube, or Twitch by simply hitting the links in the description down below. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you so much for coming out. Be kind to each other. Be good to each other. And I will see all of you in the next one. Peace out, fam.